Well, everyone, welcome to Chasing Giants TV. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for subscribing. We appreciate you all. We've had a bunch of people um, start subscribing to the channel since we announced it on the podcast. So, really appreciate that. Um, we got thunderstorms rolling through tonight, so I needed to be picking sweet corn, but unfortunately, uh, that's not going to happen. So, it's about to get dark outside, and we got another thunderstorm rolling in. So, I thought I would. Uh, work on my quiet cat bike a little bit i need to get a few things done to it it's about the only thing i got left besides cleaning guns and i'm not going to share that on this youtube channel right now um but need to put a couple accessories on it and i thought i would show you just a couple differences in the bikes uh, from last year's bike that i have and the new one that i got so hope you enjoy it if you're considering a um, electric bike we've been working with quiet cat for several years now uh, great people and uh, always taking really good care of us and never had an issue with any of the bikes. So we'll walk around and I'll tell you a few things that I've figured out or uh, observed over the years. Well, you guys get to see my messy garage. Uh, cleaning my garage has not been the top priority here recently, but it will get to it eventually. So these are my two bikes. Um, the first one is a camo pattern. I've had this one now for, I believe, this would be my third season. I own this bike. Um, we purchased it and uh, Quiet Cat's a sponsor of the podcast, obviously, but one thing I wanna explain before we start this video and get into accessorizing the Quiet Cat is I wanna be transparent with everybody that watches this channel. Um, I don't wanna try to deceive anyone or uh, give a false impression, but Quiet Cat is a partner of Don Higgins, uh, Higgins Outdoors, and the Chasing Giants brands. So that's why you see us obviously using Quiet Cat. But great tool. They are a sponsor of the podcast. But let me explain just a little bit more. So, like every other sponsor that we have for the podcast, we don't accept the sponsorship until we use the product, we buy the first one, and we see how we like it. So, we didn't engage into a full partnership with them until both of us had used them. So this bike right here is a Warrior 10. That's my bike, I own that one. And to be honest with you, I can't remember whether we paid for this bike or we traded a bunch of real world product for it, but this was not part of the original sponsorship package. This was our uh, way of buying a bike, using it and making sure that we believed in the product, the brand, and the company, the people behind it, before we went any further. So this Warrior 10, I own it. I, I don't remember whether I wrote a check for it or we, uh, we traded a uh, different product for it, but either way, it was not a givey. It wasn't a sponsored uh, product. But now our relationship with Quiet Cat has changed a little bit through the sponsorship and as it's grown, and they don't want us using three and four year old bikes anymore. So this bike over here is the new Apex Pro. Um, if you have any Instagram, social media, this thing probably is popping up all over the place. They do a lot of SEO and advertising with this bike. I know it is all over my Instagram feed usually. Phenomenal bike, a ton of power. Um, and we'll get into the differences a little bit. But the biggest difference is I don't own this Apex. Quiet Cat now gives us a demo bike that we use for the season. So we'll use this through hunting season and into consulting season. And then we can sell it as a demo bike. Uh, the, whoever the buyer is will pay Quiet Cat. And they'll get a good deal on a demo bike. We don't know the pricing of it yet. So don't, don't be peppering me with I want the first dibs or what's the pricing of it. But we will be able to offer these bikes. Don has one identical to it as a demo bike um, later in the year or after the first of the year. So I'm gonna keep this bike since I own it. I'm gonna keep it. Um, might as well, I guess I could sell it and make a little money off of it, but I'd rather just have a second one and my buddy Patrick Simpson or whoever is hunting with me this year will also have a bike and they can use it. These things are so handy especially up in Illinois when we got to get around these big ag fields. So instead of driving four wheelers in, we take these in. So full disclosure, we are sponsored by Quiet Cat. Uh, they are a very good partner of ours for a long time. 
but this bike was not provided as that part sponsorship this was the original evaluation where we always buy product and test it before we sign on the dotted line so our relationship has obviously changed and they're a great partner of ours now and we're very grateful for that but just want to make things clear so everybody understands and this bike was uh, displayed at the ATA show as a single speed and I thought man I really like that single speed because I don't want to get the spring tensioner down here wrapped up in bean and corn stalks and when I'm just using it in Illinois and around here in Kentucky I don't need I'm not out in the mountains and doing all the mountain biking so I said I wanted the single speed well what they found out is there's no slot to pull the back wheel back if you guys remember all of your old bicycles where the back axle was there was a slot right here where my finger is and you could loosen it and pull the back tire back and that would keep your chain tight well what they found out is with the hole the chain stretches and then it'll throw it off so they ended up still having to put a tensioner it's not a derailleur it's just a tensioner on it when I got my bike so I was a little bit bummed about that but no big deal but if I would have known that this was going to be on here I would have gone ahead and gotten the multiple speed bike which is like this one where you have different speeds to set different ranges of torque so uh, you just got to be careful if you're driving them in corn stalks soybeans you know a lot of debris can get sucked up into this thing uh, if you're driving it in a big ag field or something so be cognizant of that the new bike rack design is awesome especially when you can put a basket on it like this i have a basket for this bike i need to put on there um, a couple other things the suspension seat is a must-have with the wide seat this combination here um, for those of you who haven't put them on your electric bikes i don't care what brand you have even if you go to Walmart and buy you a big fat boy seat like mine and a suspension post, they are a must have. So this one's really dirty. My plan is I'm going to keep this one and my buddy that hunts with me all the time, Patrick, is gonna use it up in Illinois. So we're gonna have both bikes ready to rock and roll. One of the other mistakes that I made when I was hunting with this bike the first year because I did not read the instructions, imagine that is I would have the bike on the back bike rack of my truck and when we go to the hotel at night I would charge it up and I, I noticed that the late season it wouldn't take a charge and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't figure out why until I realized you're not supposed to charge these lithium batteries in cold weather so they do have a lock with a key on the side of it where you can drop the battery out take it inside your hotel room charge it up with your charger inside leave your bike out and then you can um, get a full charge on it. So remember that. Um, I, don't think, I don't think it matters the brand, but if you have an electric bike, don't be charging the bike outside in cold weather. That's an important, important tip for you. I learned the hard way. Good. The next thing we're gonna talk about is our bow holders and our uh, headlight. So we got a new set of these for the new Apex. This is the new bike. I already got the bin on the back. I already got the suspension seat, wide body seat. We need to work on the handlebar rails. I got my Matthews phase four up here. One of the things I noticed last year is how I had the bike rack, the gun or bow rack positioned. It did not let it uh, ride very well. So I got the bow up here. We're gonna play around with that.
Copeland gun bow rack mounted as far as I can to the control panel. I could go a little bit further this way, but the problem I ran into last year is these new low profile quivers from Matthews are fantastic when it comes to leaving your quiver on in your case, but there's not a lot of clearance for stuff like this. So I only have one arrow in there right now. I know everybody's gonna be asking me my arrow choice for this year, but I'm shooting those new MMTs from Exodus. But that isn't bad, and I think I'll be out of the way. This fits a whole lot better than my bow last year. So I'm thinking maybe I need to move this down just a little bit. See what it looks like when it's level. Then there's straps that go up over the top. There's just not a lot of clearance for your arrows and everything else. I think I might leave it like that and see how it goes. Take it for a test run sometime. Let's torque her down. This is where all you resourceful rednecks out there can help me come up with ideas is how can I anchor that in there? It sets pretty good. I wouldn't want to drive real far with it like that. But with the quiver, these low profile quivers, and I have, if I have arrows all in here, how do I wrap that without putting too much pressure on my arrow and still ride safely? Anybody got any ideas? Looking for your help. And then one other thing that I noticed is when I sit down on this seat, my butt is hitting the back of this. So I know we're not supposed to modify anything, but looking at this, I'm not sure why we couldn't drill a new set of holes and move this back two inches to where your butt, when it's sitting here, doesn't hit the back of that bar. So just an idea, not sure if I'm gonna do it or not. Uh, there's two sets of holes forward and back. Um, I got it all the way back, but maybe thinking about drilling another set of holes and just moving that bike. And also, what can I use as a floor and fender dual purpose for the bottom of the basket? Pretty cool machine. I'm excited to use it this year. Well, it's getting late. I'm ready for bed. And think about it. If, if you have any ideas, this is a community here. So I know all of YouTube is all about sharing ideas and uh, making suggestions. This time I'm actually asking for it. can do for clamps or straps to go over my bow. Those low profile quivers from Matthews are great to fit inside your case, but I haven't found a solution for clamping them onto a quiet cat or electric bike gun rack. So if you have an idea, you have experience, shoot me a message. Also, if you have an idea about what to do in this floor on the bottom of the basket to be a dual purpose with a fender and a floor in the basket, I'd love to hear your ideas. I'm thinking a piece of Lexan. Maybe you guys have a better idea. So again, stupid video, just something I'm piddling around with tonight. I hope you all enjoy it. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for your support. We really appreciate it. God bless.